Chair. I'd like to call this meeting on May 8th, 2023 of the St. Mary's Business Improvement Area to order at 6.01 p.m. Mm -hmm. Do we have any declarations of pecuniary or conflict of interest? Um, item three, amendments and approval of agenda. It is the recommendation that the May 8th, 2023 St. Mary's Business Improvement Area Board agenda be approved. Can I have a mover? Jan? No, wait. Jan, just I'm asking the question. Oh, yeah. I know it's a very long agenda, but I was wondering if we could add something Absolutely. to the agenda. Do you say what it is or do you want me to add it somewhere? I would like to propose that the BIA sponsor the Pride Day events this year. And I didn't have any information about the Pride sponsorship in time to get it on the agenda, but I do now. If we move it to the next meeting, Pride Day will pass. So we either have to chat about it tonight or not So it's the recommendation that uh, item 7.3 be added to new business for CNA's pride sponsorship. Yep. Thank you. Do you need a mover? Alex and Sakurish. Claire. All in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. Now that that's been added, it's the recommendation that the updated May 8th, 2023 St. Mary's Business Improvement Area Board agenda be approved. May I have a mover on that? Claire, Secretary Lisa. Thank you. All in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Item number four is the acceptance of the minutes. It is a recommendation that the April 17th, 2023 St. Mary's Business Improvement Area Board meeting minutes be approved by the board and signed by the chair and secretary. May I have a mover? Thank you, Jane, and the seconder. Lisa, thank you. All in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Number 5.0, 5.0 is the delegation. Uh, Item 5.1, Public Works and the Town of St. Mary's with regards to downtown beautification. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to about Jen Kelly, our Director of Public Works, and Morgan Dykstra, who's Public Works, what's your title again? Public Works and Planning Coordinator. Um, and uh, I'm gonna share my screen for them. Okay. Um, as I said, Ted Kelly, Director of Public Works. Try and talk a little bit about the hurricane. <laughs> um, apologize, I am. I was thinking what I've actually presented to people like, in this decade. <laughs> 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 like, I was thinking about my like in person? Like, really? <laughs> anyway, to have you here. Yeah, so yeah, sorry, it's a little different because I'm just used to the microphone and that's it. Anyway. Uh, okay, so we'll just, we're going to go through downtown beautification. Uh, parking, uh, the parking site that we did, and the uh, the video uh, the occupancy for the patios and merchant stuff. So we just prepared some information. I guess to jump in, if you have any questions. So I'm Jed Kelly. Some of you know me, some of you don't, but I'm sure more of you know. Okay. Uh, first on uh, education. Um, so. Current program service levels is the flower boxes, the urns, and hanging baskets. Uh, currently, it's all done through the contract service model. Uh, it was moved out several years ago for efficiency. Um, right now, we are seeing costs go up above inflationary pressures, so we're jumping in faster than anticipating. Um, the last contract in the world was, was a pretty big eye opener. Um, part of the biggest problem with this is a lot of the materials are. You know, waste at the end of the season, they're just all done. They're, they're good for a few months. It's a lot of uh, manual things like that. Um, let's go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so just as I touched on before, um, we're seeing inflationary pressure, costs go up of the contract service beyond inflationary pressures. Um, the water is a big component of that. Um, 
and as I mentioned, we're, we're just seeing the cost go up year to year. Um, we'd like to do some modifications to the program work with the BIA. There's lots of different ideas right now. There was some ideas with some precasts and trees, and precasts and things like that that pull out. Originally in 2016, the trees were removed from the Queen Street and the Lawrence Street with new constructions. Um, no one likes the trees, but the trees didn't have to survive. Rolling zone at 66 feet, turbine, turbine, turbine. Everything you need for a tree is not really what you need for a road. So on a road, you want drainage. Um, for a tree, you need you know so much earth, you need proper proper watering. But it's like the two are fighting in the end. So we remove them. But there are other areas that we talked about originally about a couple years ago. A couple years previous BIA we were talking about doing some different things. Maybe moving to some sort of the cast is somebody moving out seasonally, pulling out in the winter, that sort of thing. So, but that's TDD. So, we'll come up with some ideas and eventually this kind of move on through this term of the idea. Any questions on the matters? Any other questions? Okay. Um, so, this is Downtown parking survey internally, uh, September of 2021. Um, we didn't do it in the summer, so in, in traffic planning, um, you're not supposed to do these sort of things in the summer. Um, July and August are no fly zones. You're not supposed to do any kind of traffic plan analysis um, in the summer, so that's why we use September. Um, the survey included the 354 downtown spaces. So basically, that's uh, anything that's marked on street. We didn't count anything that was where there's a one street parking, but not. Specifically painted with in the parking stall. So, this is um, the parking lots, most parking lots, and on street parking that's been marked. So, that's from Shields, Water Street, um, uh, south of uh, Trout Creek, south of Bridges, um, down to probably, I think, you know, Trump Street would be the last um, on street. And then we also looked at the Daytona parking lot. Um, so, the two week sample period, Monday to Saturday, 8 to 5 p.m. Um, Basically, the way we did it is we recorded the last three digits of all the of all up, above the upper part that we saw in the parking space. So basically, every space had an index number at the top of the hour. Everyone was surveyed. So we ended up with this massive data set. So we, we had the data, um, but all we really looked at was kind of your, your violation rate of the bylaws. So that's your three hour limits. Um, looked at the violation, uh, sort of the infraction rate on municipal lots. So that's your eight hour limit. Now that's been increased to 10 hours. 10 hours like the last mile of vision. Um, but we do have the data. We could look at turnover rates and things like that. Um, we did see some things in there where it would look like a lot of the fractions that we do really can't verify it. Some of it looks like it was tied to downtown employment. Um, so things would cycle at lunch, that sort of thing into the price cycle at lunch, then the plate would reappear you know, for another three hours after lunch. So we really didn't kind of draw any of the data out. Um, but we do have the data, we can kind of work with it as we go. Um, that's how we did it. Um, what is it? Parking permit. Yeah. So we do a parking permit program. Um, this is something that uh, Morgan and I have been working on for several years. Basically, what we have to do is try and create some structure around an unstructured uh, kind of existing pre existing condition. So a lot of the downtown lots were being used to support downtown occupancy. So right now, um, if you come, uh, go online, you can get a parking permit if you have a same areas address, you can get a, a, an annual parking pass for one of the municipal lots. Uh, the Opera House lot does have some, with, with the exception of the Opera House lot, um, the Opera House lot has some pre existing agreements, uh, you know, previous legacy agreements, I would say. Um, so it is somewhat of a, it's not exclusive use in my interpretation of the agreements, but, but you, we only allow people that have residency on the Opera House block. So basically from like Six Water Street to 36 Water Street, so from Queen down to Jones. So you have to prove residency on that block to get a permit in the Opera House. Uh, any questions on any of that so far, thus far? No? Am I going too fast? Sorry, I just said I had to be done in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice let's, yeah, let's go to the fun stuff. All right. Okay, so uh, takeaways from Park Study. Um, so like I said, every space was surveyed top of the hour. We didn't record any plate numbers, we just recorded the last three digits. So every space top of the hour, we go around and write down the three digits. Um, utilization rate, um, 
sorry, <clears throat> on-street parking spaces, uh, weekday use high school 48%, uh, with a peaking of about 67%. So um, we, we have lots of parking, and we do have a, you know about 10% infraction violation on the bus system. Um, but it, it seems to be functioning well. Um, and like I said, that was done in September. It might be a little different in the summer, but like they said, traffic planning, we shouldn't be in the summer months, right? We could run it as a comparison to see, you know, what we're doing, you know, on, on a summer. We could, you know, the, the advantage of us doing it internally, sorry. The advantage of us doing it internally is we have the ability to run for another day or, or two, and we'd be able to, you know, generate some sample data to compare to our existing data set. Uh, so we kind of have a baseline. Um, yeah, so I'm also bringing that. Uh, I guess the uh, one question I would have how does it compare from Queen Street occupancy as to Water Street in Wellington? I, I don't have the, I, I could get, we could run the numbers, we could look at the data set like that, but like you gotta understand it's a, it's a massive uh, yeah. data set that's all put together. Um, the one observation that you know I would make is Queen Street seems to have your better turnover rate. And your side streets seem to have your larger percentage of infractions. So your north south, down to church, water have your larger percentage of infractions. Queen Street has seems to have the best refresh rate. Um, but we could. Yeah, I was going to say, did you find that Queen Street was was higher occupancy than the Water Street? Or water? Uh, like if you're saying, we haven't really, we haven't pulled, we haven't pulled the numbers, but uh, yeah, we we could. It kind of it was really kind of it, was, it really kind of followed a pattern like it was going to peak up right around lunch and then kind of drop off along the afternoon right. Um, Queen Street had, a, had probably had the best turnover rate, but as for utilization person, I guess we could run it street over street. We just didn't, didn't have the time to do it, but the data is there and we could do it for for any purposes. I guess yeah. Yeah, may I ask a question? Just. You may have addressed this, and I missed it. But the weekday utilization. What are the hours that you looked at? Under yeah. Three percent. Is that from nine until five? Yeah. So it was uh, eight to five. Okay. Monday to Saturday was when we ran the study. Yeah, we ran the study Monday to Saturday, eight to five. Yeah, and, and like I said, we have the data. It's just a matter of going through and extracting that data model as you want. And we're planning on hopefully rewriting some of it. Depends how good a nice day it is and we'll get how good a new organization. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's all I had. Okay. Um, so, parking lot spaces, uh, once again, uh, average utilization 47%. Um, we do have, we're allowing up to a certain percentage for permits on the swap. Are you saying like 50% or something? Less than. Yeah, less than. Yeah, so we we haven't hit the the max, but on the Jones Street, King, um, Elgin Street lots, we're allowing them to be in the Water Street lot. We're allowing them to be permitted up to fifty percent, um, but we're not seeing that. Um, generally, the turnover in parking lots is pretty good. We are getting lots of uh, you know kind of it looks like lots of employee day parking in, in Jones Street lots, which is great. Which we really want to see them. Um, they seem to be functioning well. Uh, we'll get on to talk about it later, but uh, it's probably. Well Yeah, it's actually sort of kind of broken. Yeah. Okay. Um, go to the next. Next one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your average uh, total utilization is forty-seven percent. Um, Saturday forty-three percent, and then you're peaking at sixty-two percent. So right now, I'd say it's functioning pretty good. Um, potentially, if we could, we'd probably want to look at some bylaw enforcement. You know, to, if we really do it too, in theory, we could get that you know nine percent moved over to municipal lots where you have a ton of women, and then that would allow for more turnover lots on your on street parking to support the kind of merchant base. So um, it's right now it's okay. You know, potentially you know my my thing would be we should maybe look at some bylaw enforcement kind of But I've been working with Jenna on that and uh, start to please bring up some stuff about too. Well, I guess I already jumped ahead of conclusion. So. <laughs> um, so that said, if we did uh, try and intensify the downtown core for occupancy, obviously we've already got this established system where we're supporting um, downtown occupancy through, through municipal parking lots. Parking permits are 
you know, quite reasonable. Um, it was an existing thing that was going on. When we got here, people were parking in municipal lots. Um, we've kind of embraced it, put some structure around it. You have to sign the application, you have to pay for uh, permit. We know who it is, so we know who the car is. If we need to get the car moved for maintenance purposes, that's what they're blind paying and sweeping. Uh, that's great. Um, and we do have some plans, uh, an example to, to move ahead uh, to increase the parking supply. Um, like, yeah. So we've already um, been working with farmers market to relocate them over the flats. Uh, I think that seems to be working well. So that's opened up that Jones Street parking lot, which is which is great. That is basically in our opinion um, where we want to. That's our premier lot, I guess. That's that's the one lot that the town has that's truly the town's and unencumbered by any kind of greenness. So last year uh, we had some claims. We did some cap upgrades. We put the some street lights in there. So the parking lot is lit now. We've got to look at some uh, asphalt improvements and then potentially expanding to the maximum extent of the property. Uh, we can't really asphalt the kind of southern portion of the property. We need to get a stormwater outlet over to Water Street. So there, there's some more work that has to be done. It's, we find that in public works, obviously, it's, you know, it's always three things you, you have to do to get to the one thing that you want to do. So um, we're working on that. So we've got the farmer's market moved. We're looking at trying to expand it. We have to do some civil works to get that done. Um, and then, yeah, additional signage, maybe, you know, that, sorry, you're attacking that with your way finding. So we've, we've kind of attacked it from several different angles uh, to try and improve the situation. Not that it's entirely broken, but I think it just needs some tweaks. So we're working towards it. So we've got you know, the requirements here working, working on it. So, yeah. Okay. Any questions about parking? Going once, going twice. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I wanted to take you to do the parking study at full, like to assemble the data set and finish what you wanted to do with it. Um, we kind of did it concurrently. So we were collecting data as I did all the reporting in Excel. Yeah. Um, so once I had the, once I had it built that it would take the data and produce the reports I wanted, mm -hmm. that once I had that done, I was able to just keep inputting the days right. and it would just yeah. suck the data out of the spreadsheets. Okay. So it, it was probably two weeks of we would we, we'd be collecting, we'd be looking for internal staff to help us collect. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, then I was working. So, yeah, I'd say probably two weeks, I'd say probably two weeks of time with multiple people helping. So, I, for an hour total, I don't even want to know. Um, but the good news is, like I said, we have it, we know how to do it, we know how to run it, and we own it, and it's not proprietary to someone else. So, we do want to be running study. Yeah, I was just curious about if somebody asks you to run that comparison in the summertime. But yeah, I'm not sure. A one day sample is just a matter of all we really need is even if we had volunteers. Um, that's what we did. We went to town staff. Mm -hmm. It's amazing you can get off to people to go take for a walk on a nice day. <laughs> we um, took a shift. Yeah, and everyone took a shift. So Kelly took a shift. And yeah. Everyone took a shift, and we just we would give you the route and you write it down. And then, yeah, it doesn't take long. If we could, you know, eight, if we had eight hours shift scheduled, maybe two days or something, then we could pick like a Tuesday and a Thursday or a Friday or something just mm -hmm. to see. But it wouldn't take long. It's just a matter of just having basically need two people to walk at every top of the hour all day long. Okay. So yeah. I won't make you do it, but I just wonder something. Yeah. Gonna, what would have to happen? Yeah. My wife might make me do it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Is there any parking? Good. Okay. Parking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next one. Sorry, I don't No. You can breathe though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We're way over that five minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, so road road allowance um, road road occupancy policy. So during COVID, we had we had council approved some temporary patios. Um, that was what everyone was doing, and dining inside, you got higher densities. Um, so what we did is we took what we learned in twenty one, morphed that into the retail and dining use. Uh, downtown road allowance policy. So it basically gives us a framework to allow for merchant displays, bistro tables, and uh, sidewalk boardwalks. Um, so we're permitting them, we can permit them at a staff level uh, from May 15th to October 15th. Uh, we've tried to simplify the process. Um, we do need a certificate of insurance from the town list is insured as you're occupying the town space. Um, there is no application fee, and all approvals are done at a uh, staff level. So we try to streamline that. So council's agreeing with us to do that. Um, let me go next slide. Okay. 
Okay, so a couple of takeaways. Um, when we look at the walking path sidewalks, so we're always at that, we're always looking for a 1.5 meter walking path. Um, we don't want it to, any kind of retail setups, displays, uh, we don't want it to affect the on-street parking. So basically we don't want you setting up in a way that you won't be able to repair doors and that sort of thing. Um, we also don't want to affect any accessible parking spaces. Um, but there are some areas in the downtown where, um, so when we talk about the downtown, we took a little sidewalk in front of any one of the retail stores. We talked about the building strip, and we talked about the walking path, and then we talked about the boulevard. Um, so basically, as long as we can maintain a 1.5 meter walking path, but there are some areas where the building strip is wider, so the space between kind of your sidewalk path, your sidewalk panels, where you could do bistro tables or chairs or things like that, beautification, urns, that sort of thing. Um, so there are some areas where we can do that. Um, we do. We do ask for like a setup. We want to kind of know what you're doing. Um, you know, things need to be anchored, um, and, and we want you to kind of pull them in. It's going to be something where you know it's not going to have the weight or something when we're going to have high winds or something. We don't want that to be terrible, obviously, right? So um, we did have. We're, we're slowly working through the process. More and more people are coming online. Uh, so we had uh, one merchant, one or two merchant applications, and then we had the two patio applications last year. Um, Let's go to the next slide. Um, so we do allow the two types, two types of street patios. So if you want to occupy, have people occupy the parking stalls, so meaning that you want to put uh, chairs and things like that in a parking stall, we do require a massing barrier. So basically, we're looking for some sort of heavy massing um, object between um, the lane of travel and the patrons of the parking stall. I personally don't prefer that setup. If, if I could go back in time, I would probably. I try, and, I try and kind of guide people towards the other way where we set people up on the sidewalk and then we divert them through the boardwalk. I, I think that is the best uh, way to do it. If we ever get to amend this policy, um, that's probably what we'll end up pushing for. The boardwalks, once again, 1.5 meter. We don't want any trip edges, they're gonna have zero transition, right? So, um, so when we're transitioning across, and then we don't want any penetrations into the asphalt or the concrete. So everything has to be done on a temporary basis. Um, Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so street patio. So we're trying to keep within the front edge of the building. If you're going to encroach, uh, kind of the way it goes, uh, we do ask for permission so you get along. So you get permission from the neighbors if we're going to encroach on, on their space. So far, that hasn't um, been an issue. Um, yeah, and we're looking to try to just maximize. We're only we're kind of limited to the three spaces, but sometimes that's going to get a little blurred depending on where we can make that that line. Okay. Into facts. So, is the side the gray part of the sidewalk? Is that three meters? Or the the boulevard piece? Yeah, like this, like the actually the sidewalk. No. So the sidewalk is uh, yeah. Well, when we talk about sidewalks, it was minimum one point five meters. Okay. Yeah. So we're always trying to maintain a one point five meter. But that's the is that the width of the sidewalk itself? Uh, I, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's a curb face sidewalk, it's so we don't have a boulevard, it's 1.8 meters, but their minimum is 1.5. So I'm pretty sure it's 1.5 down there. Yeah. So, okay. Then the other question would be any any ideas for food trucks? What's like in this scenario here? Um, like so that's the, that's a Jenna that's that's a a different different policy. Yeah. Food trucks so, are in different places. So that goes through the clerks, and we do have a a bylaw for that now, and we have some designated spaces where food trucks are allowed, and they can get a permit through the clerk's office to operate in those spots. So it's a bit that's different from what Jen's talking about here, which is basically things like the snapping turtle yeah. patio, yeah. Denny's tent that he puts out, you know, eclectic treasures, items that are on the sidewalk. Those kinds of things are things that need to go fall within this where they would need to fill out that they're taking up the sidewalk. It's only once a year that you have to fill out the application that you're going to you know, put this out, but, and it's free, but it's something that the town needs to know is happening. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, just allowing you. I don't know if there's any other examples you want to give. But... Yeah, it's just basically, we, you know, we don't really see like councils, okay, with their, they obviously pretty policy, but, you know, expanding the retail spaces on the sidewalks. It's okay as long as we, you know, we don't want to affect the street parking. 
and we're, and we're maintaining that 1.5 meters, right? We, you, you can jog, like we don't have a lot of space um, that building strip, so the space between the sidewalk and your storefront that goes in there, you know, if you have to encroach on the sidewalk, that's fine, as long as we have the paperwork in place. Um, you just have to make sure that whatever your display is, you know, not on the street, keeping that 1.5 meter walking path through, through that. So, but so far it seems to be working out. And where can this assist by the application? That's online. Yeah. That's right. Under the applications tab on the website. Under the applications tab on the website. What's it called again? It's just the general yeah. occupancy. Okay, um, okay. okay. Um, so this is something um, we've been working with uh, over the years. I think you guys might eat here over the words, so I can't really believe. But anyway, um, so we're trying to accommodate more of uh, the ability to use the public property to kind of stage renovations. So, you know, generally what we're finding. You know, there's kind of minor renovations where okay, Jed, I only need to I only need to be out here for a day, two days. And then but you know, before I'm not gonna say names, but my predecessors, we got a set of scaffolding and scaffolding is the same price as the renovation that we want to do, right? So what we're doing is we're kind of using that three-day rule. So we'll allow a diversion of the sidewalk. Uh we can do we can do temporary ramping into the park and salt and then back up, but it's got to be less than a three-day setup to accommodate uh facade renovations. Um, and then if we go on longer than three days, we, we are going to have to go to scaffold. So uh, we use our uh, road occupancy uh, form that's also available on the website. It's more of a construction based uh, traffic control plan form. If there's any questions, um, we can dive into it. But basically, we're trying to work with people, we realize there's a cost, a significant cost, everything. Um, but yeah, if you let us know, we'll try and we work with. You know, TD Bank and Emo and there's been other ones that just want to <coughs> shock and say this is a, a, a small diversion for a couple of days. Um, so, yeah, we're trying to keep it tight so that it get more just in place. So, summer move, funnest thing. Yay. Um, okay, so bylaw, the bylaw 8 of 2008 it still exists. Um, basically, we're looking for you to. Kind of take over the storm removal after 10 a.m. Um, so the way that storm storm removal works in the town, uh, we have an on-call operator who's in at 2 a.m. He does road patrol. Uh, if he so if they have a significant storm event or we really call it like a full plow, he'll kind of wake up the, the troops and then we'll have the first we'll, we'll have the first pass done for you in the morning with a trackless machine. Uh, and then we bring in our, our park tracker park tracker kind of push back the corners. But then after and once the downtown kind of gets busy, we can't get that sidewalk to put it down there. Uh, for that. Uh, downtown cleanup, there was lots of discussions about that last winter. Um, so once we hit that 24, 24 inch mark, uh, we started lining up the downtown cleanup, we call it. So we're removing that storm storage from downtown. That is, it's getting interesting. We've got to find a period where, A, we're not expecting another significant snow accumulation. So if we're going to have four days of snow, don't expect a snow clean a downtown cleanup on day three because I need to keep my, my forces in reserve. So generally, when we do a cleanup in traditional ways, it, it kind of pilfers most of the crew. They're starting at 1 a.m. And, and we're doing downtown cleanup, and then we're bringing in some contractors for extra trucks and, 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 and the floors and like that. We were cleaning out the new model where we're using our sidewalk machine. It works okay um, if we have more time, like if we have kind of a period where we're not going to have those accumulations, we can we can work away at that. Um, certainly, you know, we do have to kind of load up the money gun if we want it all done at night, and it's three five thousand dollars total total cost of wages for loaded for, for contract services and our, our labor. Um, but it is it is a bit of a trick trying to schedule it. And then we did with this climate change, we are seeing some pretty extreme weather uh, swings. So like last year, we did have one where we just waited, and you know, can see the temperature was going to go double digits. So we just waited for it to melt. So, um, yeah. any questions about uh, snow or snow in general? Okay. That's it. 30 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Close. Yeah. Close. You try it.
Try. Thanks, Jed. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. 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 Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jed. Jed, is this yours? Oh, yeah. Oh, we talked about it. Okay. I think I'm going to see you for me. Oh, there's this. Um, Amy, you're going to share your. Hi, uh, yes, I am. Yes, no, no, I'm just kidding. All right. Can you hear us okay? Wait. Andre's dying. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put a battery in the one next to me. So just going to be the recommendation that uh, the Public Works Downtown Beautification Delegation be received as information. May I have a mover? Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Oh, there it is. Any opposed? Thank you. So moved. Oh, okay. Item 5.2, uh, Amy Coverly and Alana Bose for doors open. All right. All right. Thanks for having us here this evening. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect, Amy. Okay, we're getting, I'm getting some weird feedback here, but I'll just keep talking. Um, so I have been here to give this presentation before, but it's been a couple of years and I know there's lots of new faces on the BIA this term. So Alana and I are here just as an FYI to share some information about Doors Open, which is coming up on September 23rd. So a little background on Doors Open. Um, this first started in France in 1984, and by 1980, or sorry, by 1991 had expanded to most of Europe. And then the first Canadian Doors Open event took place in 2000 in Toronto. And by 2002, the Ontario Heritage Trust had launched Doors Open Ontario, which was the first of its kind in Canada and the first uh, province-wide event. And so it's now kind of spread to um, a global movement. So um, really all Doors Open is, is an opportunity for communities within Ontario to open the doors of some of the unique um, buildings that are in that community. So it can be uh, public buildings, private buildings, um, commercial buildings, uh, residences, churches, kind of anything goes for this event, which is what makes it a lot of fun. Um, so this year we are one of 13 um, municipalities that are participating in the event. And um, the doors open season runs from April through until October. So basically every municipality picks a weekend that works for them. And so uh, Guelph typically kicks off this season in late April. And then um, uh, Niagara on the Lake is usually one of the later ones at the end of October. So St. Mary's has participated in Doors Open since 2004. So we were one of the early adopters of this event in the province. And um, initially we hosted it in late May and then more recently we moved to late September to kind of help stretch our tourist season into the fall. Um, of course, in 2001, we held it in October. Just uh, we were kind of on the fence about whether we were going to be participating or not, given the uh, pandemic situation and so we settled on a October date um, and then since 2005 we have participated every other year so um, I think that back to back in 2004-2005 made uh, both staff and volunteers realize that putting on this event every single year in St. Mary's is is going to be a lot so we've uh, stuck with every other year and um, on the odd years and we typically target uh, 15 to 18 sites um, to participate in the event. Um, attendance wise, we had been seeing a nice uh, steady increase there. So this is uh, the attendance based on the busiest sites that participated. 
Um, so we were seeing kind of up to 600 and 400 uh, attendees in both 2017 and 2019. Um, of course, that dropped in 2021 with the pandemic and our kind of scaled back doors open. But uh, we are hoping to see numbers in uh, kind of around that 500 range again this year. And so these are the 16 sites that we have um, committed for this year's doors open. So a lot of our kind of standard regulars, which include a lot of the municipal buildings. Um, one new or a couple of new ones include 14 Church Street North or um, the Mercury Theater. So um, that building will be open for an open house this day. Um, Hodges Funeral Home and Broken Rail Brewing are two relatively uh, new ones that have been on before but are not uh, frequent. Uh, Riverwalk Commons, so Melissa has committed to opening her building for the day, um, and the Riverside B&B. &B. And so, of course, um, the Heritage Conservation District, we include as one stop on the tour. Um, there have been times where we have had specific businesses on the tour, but we found um, just in the interest of supporting the entire BIA, it is best to have the entire HCD on. And then um, it, it doesn't look like we're playing favorites and everyone has an opportunity to participate equally. And over to Alana. We can't hear you, Alana. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll just speak for a couple of minutes about the BIA involvement. Um, so basically, you can expect on that day uh, busier than usual traffic. I believe the doors open hours are uh, 10 to 4. Um, so definitely busier traffic during that time, but maybe the hours before and after as well. Um, we invite you to uh, create a more welcoming environment with sandwich sandwich boards, um, maybe something that says like welcoming, doors open, uh, decorations, specials, etc. Um, and that's up to you how you would like to be involved in that way. Um, sharing social media posts and then um, just continuing to keep us informed of any spin-off events. So um, if somebody does decide that they do want to have an open house on that date or something similar um, to inform us so that we can um, help to, to promote that or to know about that as well. And yes, yeah, that's that's really it from us. So we're really just here as an FYI to have that date on your calendar and uh, hopefully have your support with um, cross promotion and uh, to reach out to us if you have any um, questions or any ways that you want to specifically get involved. Um, but are there any questions from the BIA while we're here this evening? Okay, well, I think that's all from us then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so at this point, it's the recommendation that the doors open delegation be received with information. Can I have a mover? Thank you, Claire. Seconder. Thank you, Lisa. All in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Item 5.3, we have Andre and Kelly. All right. Built on a field re revitalization project. All right, I will be short while Kelly puts this up. But um, so we wanted to make sure you were aware of what we are working on in regards to milk on the field. This project's kind of been toyed with and ongoing for the last year or so. Uh, it was part of council's strategic plan to kind of make some upgrades to that uh, that park. And we applied for a grant last year, received $250,000. So we hired a consultant to assist us, a uh, landscape architect, as we, as we kind of prepared some concept designs. So um, I'll talk a little bit about what we did to get there. But if you go to the first slide, uh, Kelly, uh, the idea here is to develop Milt Dunnell Field. Um, I, I wouldn't say develop it more, it's just enhance what we have there today. Um, a little bit more of uh, an outdoor amenity 
for both the community and our visitors as, as they come in. We certainly have seen throughout the pandemic that people headed outdoors, wanted to kind of self-guide, self-activity, self-activities. And certainly when we added the, um, the Yak Shack to, to the portfolio, certainly we see some heavy interest on, on that front. So again, just how can we encourage that type of activity a little bit more? So we want it to be multi-use. Uh, there are some, some things that are down there now, like the uh, the lawn bowling um, that kind of has fairly uh, specific use of that facility there. How can we kind of expand that facility, make it more of a multi-use facility uh, as we go forward? And then obviously improve the accessibility of the park so that we can just get more people using it um, on that. Front. So keep going, Kelly. Um, so what we've done is we've developed two concepts and the intent here is we're going to go use these concepts to go to the public with. This is always kind of a battle. We didn't want to go to the public with a blank slate. We want to create some concepts. Um, but just because we have concepts doesn't mean that this will be the be and end all of the final plan. We're going to take that information we gather from the public and the organizations around town, create a final master plan, and we're hoping to go to council with that. In, I was hoping originally for July, it might end up being August because we're a little bit late getting kind of off the ground again here. But uh, this is kind of one of the concepts and you can see, uh, I won't go through all the details, but this will be available uh, very soon on our website as we launch kind of our, our public input period, which will start, we're hoping to start this week, might end up being next week. But there'll be a bunch of details, there'll be a survey to go out, we're, we're going to actually hit the farmer's market up as well and have a booth there just to start presenting and gathering input from people at that front. We're going to ask some organizations like the BIA to provide any input if, if you do as a group. Uh, but I, so I wanted to come here first, but again, you'll see on the left hand side, we're going to enhance the parking area at the back. We want to make it a little bit more friendlier for the farmer's market and, and some of those activities. So people will see a little bit of a, uh, on the south of that parking lot, you'll see uh, a little uh, establishment there for, for farmer's market or a covered area for the farmer's market. We wouldn't necessarily change where the lawn bowling is and where that building is, but we do want to make some upgrades to that facility, um, both on the bathroom side, but also on the interior side, and again, use it for maybe other user groups can use that facility as well as lawn bowling. Um, we've got the, the dock as shown on here, and we're working through that right now with Upper Thames um, as to how we can get that dock uh, moving faster than, than this master plan. So we've, we've already got approval to move that forward from the council perspective. We're now working with approvals from Upper Thames, and, and hopefully if everything goes according to, to plan uh, that dock, you'll see an accessible dock there this, this summer. Um, we have kind of an area in the middle where we'd have kind of a a stage a little bit for, for some of the events that have happened there, but also uh, opportunity to have uh, big events. Um, we've got playground areas. Uh, in this concept day, we've left the, the ball diamond there. We have talked to minor ball and, and, and they don't necessarily use this diamond very much um, and likely may not use it moving forward. So you'll see in the second design, we've kind of pulled it out completely. Um, we, there's two there currently. Yes. In the middle of the field. So this would limit it down to one, which so we'll be removing one diamond to be able to make space for other things. So, so we've enhanced, uh, obviously, a lot of the covered area, the trees, the, the canopy in that front. Um, in this model, we've, we've added kind of a basketball court that doubles as some parking for um, food trucks or something like that in, in case of events. And again, you can tie the electricity to that properly. And then again, enhance the parking lot. Um, on that side, on the right-hand side as well. And then you, you see on the right-hand side, there's a new building there that we're hoping to, um, both models, there's different variations of it, but we're hoping to have a, a washroom facility that's a lot closer to the road, but then a lot closer to downtown as well, visible as it comes into the park. And that could also act as a little bit of a visitor situation um, kiosk area there. So, so that's, again, we're not doing a lot here, but we're hoping to refresh the space space make it a little easier. Uh, the big uh, change as well you'll see in these designs is it's not necessarily now a, a loop, drivable loop, whereby the drive would be the north hand side uh, where that'd be two-way traffic and the rest of the paths would be more pedestrian uh, wise and, and again uh, just stop 
um, the traffic's and pedestrians to be using the same space, right? So we know that that's a piece that we're going to hear a little bit about. People like that, so we'll, we'll certainly see what that feedback looks like and, and, and make any enhancement, enhancements as as we work through this. We've also talked about uh, during winter lights in the winter period, uh, there is opportunities to build in such a way that we would kind of block off the access, drivable access to the pedestrian ways, but we can pull those in the winter and pull those when we do maintenance. Um, and maybe in the winter, there still is a route to go our winter lights program or something like that. So again, a lot of this information will be flushed out because we want we don't want to pre-impose what the public is going to say, uh, but certainly we have some general ideas of how this can go. Um, so if you can pull through the next one, and you'll see concept B, a lot of the same amenities, just highlighted a little differently. The layout's a little different. We want to see what people think of the layout. Uh, we've removed all the ball fields in this, this scenario, so it's getting more and more green space. Uh, we've kind of got a little garden center, which is, uh, again, good for, for those you know, selfies and photo ops, uh, along with um, you know, a little staging area for, for larger events. Uh, we've got some some dining, outdoor dining areas. And again, all both concepts and any concepts. We know we want to be in a lot more seating, a lot more benches, um, a lot more picnic tables, that, that type of thing. Uh, as we move forward uh, on that front, uh, this model as well is different. We've got a little bit of a lookout uh, to the river uh, as well, uh, along with the dock um, on this front. So again, this one just just highlights things a little bit differently, but but has a lot of more than one to things is the first one. So we're not asking, so the idea of moving forward is uh, we're, we're hoping to send out the survey within the next couple of weeks. It'll be out there for about four weeks in total. If you go to the next slide, um, Kelly, we met with uh, some fair, some of the stakeholder groups uh, ahead of time, just to understand how they use the park now. So we can take that and incorporate that into our concepts. Again, without necessarily defining what this might be, but I think uh, people just tend to, to be able to highlight uh, things differently when they see it. Um, so that's why we've got kind of these concepts. Yeah, we asked also how to use the park, but also for feedback on how it could be improved for the research. So, and by user groups, it was you know the Kinsmen, Farmers Market, Lawn Boy, uh, Rotary Alliance, uh, baseball. baseball. There was many groups uh, that we met with to kind of go over how they how they plan events and, and what sort of issues they they would like fixed, etc. So so I I've, I've added in here some of the highlights from those conversations that we tried to implement in these drives. Yeah, and you'll see those highlights is not surprising, and certainly that's what we've heard. Uh, and we met also with our internal departments to understand what, what their needs were as well. And I don't think anybody would be surprised by by those comments that you see with better lighting, better walking paths. Um, uh, the question around sports, or no sports, was also one of those interesting comments. Um, and again, one of the highlights here is, is we have different parks in town that, that have different amenities. How do we keep this more, more natural, um, but also more of a destination as well that helps draw people in, community use it, but again, it's so close to that type of thing, you know, that side of it. So, so we're pretty excited about this project. Keep it full head. Um, it's going to be difficult because again, everybody's got a lot of different things here. So, and and there's only a certain amount we can do. We can't build large facilities out there. It is in the floodplain, so we got to be careful what we're doing. But at the same time, we, it, it, it works as as it is today. So how do we just kind of make some small tweaks and improve that as we move forward? So, um, the general plan is we'll go to the public this uh, over the next month or so. We'll gather all of that input. We'll then put that forward to council with a, a final recommendation on the plan. We'll start to spend that first 200, well, we'll end up, we've got $250,000, but we'll spend, spend a little bit already. Um, spend that first kind of phase of, of dollars, depending on what the final plan looks like. And then over the next uh, three to five years, we'll talk for further grants and further opportunities and our municipal and annual budget, depending on where we go with the final plan. Um, in the next three to five and have it fully completed um, as, as we need to do. Um, so that's kind of the, the plan as we see it moving forward. But you will kind of hear about this. Uh, we'll send it out to VA and membership as well. But as you start to see this information, you see it online, I'll make sure um, this is you can get it out to you. But if you want to add it to a future agenda and make formal comments at the VA, 
that's fine. If you just want to have businesses make it to us, um, that's, that's more than that. So you'll see a lot more coming forward. And then obviously we'll represent in the future once we've got final design. Um, or you'll also have an opportunity to come back more time again. Uh, just because final design is not there, we can take some of our changes. So that's what's happening with the, the, the last project that I hope most of you have heard a little bit about, but we're kind of kind of pushing up a couple of things that do this. We were hoping to have it out this week. This will be an official launch, but presentation that we So yeah, let me know uh, if you have any thoughts or, or certainly I'll send you out to the survey that um, survey's not the only way. So at this point, it would be the recommendation that the Mill Dunham Field Revitalization Project delegation be received the receipt of information. May I have a mover? Thank you, Claire. Seconded. Thank you, Sue. All in favor? Any opposed? So. Item six is correspondence. At this time, we have correspondence from uh, Lynch regarding the winter season. I'll go ahead and read that for you. Hello, this hope, hello, hoping this finds you all well. I would like to request a minimum of $5,000 be allocated to the beautification committee for the winter season. This would cover from mid-November to mid-March, color on the streets during the driest months of the year. Merchant open house. I would like to suggest that all advertising monies be reassigned to an advertising marketing committee as part of an overall winter season package, four months instead of three days. This includes postcards, radio, day trippers, social media, local newspaper, website, newsletter. The Advertising and Marketing Committee would decide using best practices how the funds are allocated. I would also like the board to consider dropping the blanket, we pay the tax as part of the merchant open house messaging and let each merchant decide on their own promotion. I have asked for this before and will ask again. Just because it's always been done does not mean it should continue. We've changed how we shop, communicate, entertain ourselves, and can get pretty much everything that is available in St. Mary's online with free shipping. What they can't get is the experience, and that is why they cannot. If Save the Tax works for you, terrific, and you continue to do that. If not, choose whatever works best for your business. Many thanks for taking the time to consider my request. Sincerely, Chantal Lynch, 144 King Street, St. Mary's. Can we take them one piece at a time? There's a lot in here. However, you'd like to. <laughs> Would you like me to start with the first question? Yeah, I think so. so. The first item indicated is. Um, Five thousand dollars to be allocated to the beautification committee for the winter season, covering from November to mid March. So, the holiday committee that went this week have a budget that doesn't cover just three days. It's something that's more for decorating and other things throughout the winter. It is not just a three-day thing. Um, we're also talking about expanding that postcard that we have to include events like the door event, for example, um, giving that out in heritage funds. So there's a few things that we do want to still talk about. Um, I think your next question was creating another committee. And I think that's just making more and more committees doesn't make it better. We have that particular thing that's happening there. And and I think that's right now going to work the best. Um, as well as taking more money out of that fund, I'm not really sure why it should be that, but that's a question I guess we need to ask her. She, she's not here to know. Right? And then I guess the last question would be asking her how her business does during that tax-free day. Um, how does that work for her? The one she wants to. 
it's irrelevant. Just Isn't well, she a one, retail? Yeah, it's just one person's experience. Right. I think we have to ask all retailers how this works. And I think them. you get a mix. Like, there's going to be people that have to do pay the tax, don't right. pay the tax. We've always done it. It's the best weekend of the year. And then there's other people that it's, I got forced into doing it because even if you didn't want to participate, you pretty much have to because people assume you're participating, even though the card says participating. Yeah. But if people think that that's what it is, they walk in and they assume you're getting it. And then you have to say, ah, actually, no. And then, they, oh, they don't read the fine print. Right. And then there's businesses that wouldn't want to do it at all, but you sort of get tagged because people assume it's everybody. So, so we came up with split another, on that. Right. So we came up with another idea talking about this particular, and that's like all of these things are fair. We should talk to everybody who's part of the downtown, you know, like, and if it's a majority, we keep it. If it's not a majority, we don't, but we should talk to everybody. About this particular thing, I don't know. We can put out a survey. Put out a survey, who, and go and actually talk to people because um, I know surveys are not one hundred percent. Yeah, eleven people answer them. So, yeah. but I feel like people who are really invested will <laughs> yeah. yeah. And seven of them are sitting right here. Right. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah. I think that they people would don't also understand maybe how when we communicate face to face, sometimes it's easier. Anyway, um, another idea we were talking about was maybe. Um, definitely adding more to the card than just what it is and adding to more events that will happen maybe during the holiday season and beyond so it doesn't have to necessarily just be those three days it could be a card that you know that is a great time to hand out to people about events that will go further but we just had our first just gonna try again yeah. the town does an event card okay so it's actually in print right now okay and it has um, basically any event uh, in town that's of kind of municipal significance. So for example, the Merchant's Open House is on, on there. At the time of print, I don't think we had the exact dates, so we just put November and then put the information where to find it. And then things like the Kinsman Summer Fest, Heritage Festival, all those dates are going to be listed on that event card. So we'll make sure you guys get that when it's out so you can see what's on it and, and then think about that as we prepare the one you're right. talking about. The date also, I think we decided on the November 24th weekend. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, we went to yeah. No, no, so just so like I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that helps with most things that are happening. Um, but there was another suggestion that we could say participating businesses follow like a snowflake throughout town. That could also help if you don't want to participate in that. Sort just of like thing. the advent, calendar. you know, like the yeah, advent. You can have an easy visual yeah. of like this. Follow is the snowflake through town. Scan this QR code for your particular promotions or events. But just a question: If you didn't say don't pay the tax at all, and it's just merchants open this weekend, newer people won't have it in their head that everybody's doing it, whether you want to participate or not. If you just say merchant open house, and then when they go into your individual business, you're saying do not pay the tax in here. It doesn't hurt the people for the do not pay the tax to choose to do that. But it does help the people that don't want to participate in that or can't participate in that. I don't but think if, you're. Yeah, but on the other hand, the participating merchants who want to do that, like if we did individual, we don't get the collective experience of having to advertise in the social media. So, I mean, I, like, okay, so I mean, like we had St. Mary's money. So, participating merchants can take the St. Mary's money, but not all of them do. But we have a sticker on our window that says so put a we, window we're a participating like merchant. So, yeah. It could so, also be about to bring people to town that weekend. And if pay the tax is what works to bring people to town, or like I I come shop with think, us downtown, I think that's the same. This is what is an incentive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't pay the tax weekend. And that's an incentive for a lot of people. This is what I've been hearing. Yeah. You know, they're like, and this is also yeah. a tradition, and people like know that this is a weekend. So, I it's hard for food. I, it doesn't really affect us because it doesn't really apply to food businesses. So, it but apply to my no, I know. And so I'm trying to feel of like it really works for retailers. So then, how do we also, in that we pay the tax, attract people to come to other businesses? Just them coming to town to buy stuff may not be enough. Like, how do we get them in restaurants? Like, I mean, that's up to restaurants and, that and us be, to decide. That, yeah, that could be also but, the um, like. You could have a QR code that's for the like 
whatever we could say like like categories like a drip, like yeah. a different tours like here's your here's your food tour yeah. here's your mm -hmm. like like go and check out retail these retailers tour. for their special like it could, that doesn't have to necessarily be one thing but mm -hmm. that could attract a group of people that do come i'm yeah. not sure of the numbers because i hasn't been around for that yeah clear huh. do we know like do a majority of the merchants like that don't pay a tax i'm not sure yet. Yeah, and that is one thing that we're like for about. my business, yeah. I would say retail is a really like for my business. Most people don't actually realize that for books you only pay five percent tax. So there, <laughs> I see, didn't know that either. Yeah, most people don't realize <laughs> that books are only taxed at five percent. So they come in thinking they're getting this massive savings, but they really are. I mean, it's enough. Five percent is five percent. But for me as a business, I do amazing sales, but the hit isn't as bad for me because I'm only paying 5%. But for businesses where the items are more expensive than a $20 book and they're paying 13% tax, it's probably extremely expensive well, for them to operate this like too. Yeah. Um, so I just wondered if we knew, yeah. like if we had any idea how many businesses thought well, that's was an amazing idea or how many businesses think that times have changed and maybe this is something that needs to change too. I think we need to find out from every single business. That yeah. is for sure. Because you're also yes. looking at profit margins. Like, I mean, like, if your biggest seller is your lowest margin item, yes. and you just gave away everything that was in it, that didn't work for you for those years. Yes. Yeah, so we need to ask. We do need yeah. to ask. We need to ask. And this is a work. This is but, yes, a whole time. And, yeah, and at this yeah. point, this is just information. So not yeah. just information. This is very valid yeah. information it's that we're just receiving. Sure. So we, we mm -hmm. can do, I think, and we need to know exactly how we actually everybody feels, not mm -hmm. just one person or not one other person. Do you know what I mean? Like I think it is and there's more than two thing. ways of it. There, there's yeah, also like, two yeah. ways to doing this. Or there's lots of different things. ideas to do. Yeah. And it, you know, and it also is just a great opportunity. Like this is a great opportunity to find out what businesses we want at that holiday season. If you want to call holiday season said Christmas, that also is a conversation. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um Finding that information, I think, is our first step. Uh, I can just comment from doing this for many years. Um, when it used to be one day and it was like 11 to 5, there's only so many people you can cram through your door in that one day. So the hit has actually gotten more painful now. It's a three day event because people tend to scope out for the week or the two weeks ahead uh, even to the point where stuff gets hidden so they will come on the day out they can pull it out and get it more tax um and it is a it's a it's a big financial hit when when the sales are for three days i don't think the sales are pretty good yes is it, it possible to, be, to make it less than three days like does it have to be three days it, it was it was up until 2019 it was one day it was the same day but this is what i noticed too like for the first two weeks before the sale you get people coming in the store and you would tell them listen if you're waiting for the i'll just do it right now just to save you coming back oh no no i'm not i'm not and then the day of the sale you see them walk through and, and pick up all the things they wanted and buy it um I mean, that's my whole point. If you only target it as tax free, that's what they come looking for. And then, so the first two weeks of your month are dead because they're all waiting for it. So, what you do make up, you're making out a lower margin because you have to get the tax away and you have to wait to get the benefit of the sale because you're waiting for the two weeks before the sale happens. So, from, from 2003 to 2019, it was the last Sunday of November. Was always the last Sunday, um, and then with COVID and meeting the social distancing, that's when it spread over three days, and it's kind of just stayed on that three days. But in that long time stretch, the 2003 to 2019, it was always no tax Sunday on the Sunday. No tax. And did everyone participate? No, no, not everyone participated. Because you lose the people who don't want to be open or don't want to be open Sunday, like work. No. For whatever reason, okay. do not want to be open on Sunday. But you can also take things off. You don't have like these things aren't included. Yeah, and people yeah. do that. Yeah. I know yeah. Johnny's took off all the yummy things. Things that I don't do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 They took off. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's, that's their prerogative. Yeah. You can also do that too. So I think we're coming up with a few ideas and 
we are talking about it. And that's a good thing to get everybody's opinion on that specific thing. It seems like it's a hot, hot topic. And it's kind of I, yeah, and, 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 and I understand, I do understand and respect the sense of urgency and the wanting to keep the momentum, um, but no one's doing any, no, I'm not planning my Christmas shopping yet as a, like, as, you know, I know you're doing your buying or whatever, it's but it's not. it's more for advertising purposes, yeah. card purposes, and then just getting things it's like ducks in a row sort of thing you know what I mean? yeah and also having this conversation now is probably a better idea than it being sprung on like right before christmas yes. so it's a good thing like yeah. Yeah. yeah i um i disagree with the two other points about splitting more community like taking the advertising marketing committee we're getting a, hopefully a social media person yeah. that yeah. you know i think that will be a tailoring and we'll see much more movement on that um and also the holiday community, Christmas community, whatever you want to say, it is also talking about decorations for the winter season. It's not just talking about three days. So, but shouldn't that actually be moved? We've moved over to beautification, and then you have a whole year plan. So, if beautification does just that, including holiday decorations, and there's ideas floating around what we do for spring and fall, trying to keep something going on your rock ground, and then holiday uh, sub working group. Was more of an event working group so you can do it the holidays you could do something in the spring and maybe that working group could come up with events for spring fall and winter when we don't have things we have stuff in the summer but the other parts and so that working group could encompass all of those just events and then beautification takes care of beautification i don't think we're there this year but well, fair point but I, it would be nice to have a vision of how yeah. we're going to end a plan of how and then how we decorate decorated each season and I think that'd be a great idea. I think yeah. right now we're you know, we're not there. May going into June. You know, I, I think we should uh, revisit that conversation, that request about beautification maybe in August, because we don't even know yet if this five thousand dollar ask for the spring one is even going to work. It's good. Mm -hmm. We need yeah. to see how that all like what problems and what came out of that. With that and, and, and I would also like to know a little bit more about how you're going to spend five thousand dollars in the winter when it's snow and snow you have to clear sidewalks and, and you know well, this snow is what, are this coming is what in better work with that have come up with ideas yeah, that aren't on the yeah, sidewalk. Yeah. And if you had beautification as in charge of all kinds of decorations, you set the budget and then within that budget of the whatever four projects we want to do. That's all you got this year. And Hopefully everything else goes that can be reduced. Exactly. Year. And I think that's like key. I think having like talking about water and stuff, we need to figure out different ways that are going to be sustainable. But we then when we talk about sustainable products too and things that we also need to figure out a way to store it and pay for storage. So those are also conversations that all come into this, which is it's really interesting. I think it's like a fascinating thing that we can start doing this now. And creating a really great event that can piggyback onto something else, like the next event. Keeping in mind, too, the beautification also covers uh, banners on the poles, it covers alleyway beautification, uh, uh, parking signage, <laughs> directional signage. Um, so to just put it into flowers and flowers mm -hmm. is not that yeah. are seasonal. Yeah, so I think August will have a better idea. And I, I just think to, to me, and I, I don't know, but um, I think directionally, like we're all moving this the right direction. Like everyone, we're kind of getting everyone on board. I think this just more speaks to a real reallocation of money sometimes, which I think is just causing noise maybe and not creating enough um, the, the points might be getting lost and the points will evolve when they come. I think and we also for have me. a more fluid um, budget. We have talked about yes. this a few times is, over yes, and over the again process. that we have a fluid budget that if someone comes in with an amazing, crazy, plan, kick-ass idea, we yeah. can be like, okay, how are we going to move money? How are we going to trim the fat to get this to come in? So yeah. I think... I think we have that availability because we're also pretty new. Like we're trying to figure things out. We're trying to make a bigger plan. Um, so I think, yes, those points are great. We'll move on to that. But I think also knowing that we have time.
Point, it's the recommendation that the correspondence from C. Lynch be received as information. May I have a mover? Thank you, Alex. Second. Thanks, Dan. All in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Okay. Item 7.0 or 7.7 7, new business. Uh, 7.1 the annual general meeting feedback, which Dan Troyer is going to facilitate for us. So well, I wasn't expecting to facilitate, and I hope I don't have to do too much here. But, um, <laughs> I just thought we had a great meeting. Thanks to Megan, who did a great job facilitating that meeting. Alex. <laughs> so, but anyway, but I, I thought we handled it. I thought it was a very good meeting. I thought it was handled very well. And I appreciate how we all work together. But I, <clears throat> and it, like I thought it would be good to hear some feedback about how you guys, because we hadn't had really had a chance to talk about it together, but how, what was good, what was, what needs to be improved. So sort of like how it was, I mean, for myself, I thought, I thought it was very well. I mean, everyone was prepared, but just sort of waiting to hear for that. And then. Everyone was the best day to hear it was really collaborative like i think there yeah. was like comments and feedbacks and questions and like you know people like had alternate ideas but everyone i think is working towards working together and do like space is great i find sometimes when it's an annual general meeting it has sort of the stigma that it's going to be very structured very dry mm -hmm. and I think it would be really nice to get the membership on board so that next year our numbers are double that mm -hmm. it has that social feel and it feels like it's like kickstart to the year and people are engaged and so mm -hmm. I, I, that's what well, anybody took pictures Post on social media. I took yeah. pictures, right? I have pictures. Yeah. Even if we had like next year, like I know it started at six, but maybe next year the solution is like like a business after five kind of thing where you there's a mixer and then if you want to stay afterwards for the annual general meeting, you can. So we can kind of like loop people in. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, that's great. That's great. I'm not looking at all <laughs> Thank you very much. But, and then uh, I think the second part of this then too, I was also impressed with how we engage with the people after the meeting. And I spoke with one person who was not a member of the BIA, or, but was a resident within the BIA. And she said, how do we, how do I talk about what I want to do or what I see about with the BIA? So well, just come and talk to us and then we'll bring it up. And she said, had you ever thought about um, Mentoring was another BIA that was successful, like Bayfield or Aurora. So I thought of it. So I mean, that's something that maybe at some point we can talk about if that's something we need. But then I thought, what if, what if you guys were all engaging with other people? You guys. I would definitely be fortunate. Yeah. Well, Dr. Aurora's BIA with Bayfield's BIA. So, so it's, yeah, it's probably the same person then, but were, were there any other? When you talk with people, I think that that's pretty much that's a lot. Thank you, Dan. At this point, it would be the recommendation that the annual general meeting feedback presentation be accepted as information. May I have a paper? Thank you, Sarah. Second. Thank you, James. All in favor? Any opposed? So moved. 7.2 again is the Heritage Festival yeah, update. Uh, that will also be facilitated by Dan Troyer, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the facilitator extraordinaire. <laughs> um, so one of the questions was, and I'm not sure where this came from, whether it was from Atlanta or from the Heritage Festival, 
but are we promoting Heritage Festival as a sidewalk sale? Has that been in the past? I don't know how many how many merchants participate in the sidewalk sale. But I mean, one of, one of the things that we talked about is that if, if I want to um, put stuff out in public, I don't want to be in the center of the road. I would like to use my sidewalk as part of that, since it's people can walk on the street, so I can use my sidewalk at this point. So, but then do we do we promote it as a sidewalk sale, or do we just leave it off and just? I think unless I misunderstood what Jed was saying too, like as long as we submit that application and we leave 1.5 meters of the sidewalk, well, no, we can actually, put stuff out yeah, all the time. Yeah, no, but this is this is just for this one day. This is not this is and, and this the road is gonna be open. You're just talking about the language. You want to say sidewalk yeah, sale? Yeah, like like in our promotions. Well, I think again it would get tricky, like is every business participating in the sidewalk sale or not like kind of yeah. with the no tax event like and i know there's people that really count on the heritage weekend to have a sidewalk sale right do they so count they, on it being promoted as a sidewalk sale or do they just count well, on see, people coming to town and being out there never, 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 never got submitted it never, it never got officially okay. submitted so that's there was emails but it never it didn't want to it didn't want to commit to an agenda conversation it goes in the same vein as the merchant over house of the tax freedom. Yes. It's, it's, it's the same, and, and that's what I felt. That's if what I promoted as a sidewalk sale. Then I think that the assumption would be that every merchant yeah. is having a sidewalk sale. But does that pull people into town to come to the sidewalk sale? I mean, isn't it? I, I wasn't, at, I guess I missed that conversation, but um, we were discussing it. I think there's the vendors, so it could be part of it that there could be sidewalk sales as part of it. Does it? Does it matter yeah. if everyone has committed to doing the sidewalk sale? Because no, 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 I'm not saying design. that people have to commit to it. It's, it's more in our promotions. Do we okay. say that there's going to be a sidewalk? There's a, so, a, a, a sidewalk sale. Can we be clever enough to just not use the term sidewalk sale? Like has a predisposition of everyone yeah. thinking it's like well, I, the mall where everything's like put in the middle and everything's and being blown out. Then like yeah, sidewalk local shopping. merchant or yeah, I, uh, merchants feature like weekend. I would tend to stay away from it just because. I mean, I, I walk up and down our street, and I, I don't think there's a lot of people that would actually have sidewalks there. But and I think there's it's too many service people. I think it's great information to share, which I said to, to today, that we can people can put stuff out yeah. on sidewalk yeah. if they submit the application and there's still enough room for pedestrian traffic. Like well, it can happen all the time. There, there's a whole road. Yeah, there's but I'm evidence there. for all the time. What Dan is saying is for, for heritage, for festival, heritage everybody is allowed to put stuff on. It's kind of a blanket. Like you don't have the application. You don't have to put the application. Right. The application is more for a year long, all summer. Mm -hmm. You're putting stuff out on the on the sidewalk. We want to know about it. Events we treat differently. So um not everybody needs to have insurance because the event is insured sort of thing. So, so that's where I think Dan is saying, you don't need to have a build out in order to put stuff out. But I can tell you for our promotions, I don't think we've ever even used sidewalk sale no, in our promotion. No, I'm not sure it's where it so, says in the list but I know of people do it. the it events, it says downtown shopping, vendor market, food trucks, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah. yeah. And I guess downtown shopping, can be interpreted yes. however each person wants it to be. Lots of individual retailers can put their own advertising on sidewalks. Well, yeah. well so. they don't have to even have a side, they just put stuff on the sidewalk and that's the side. And if yeah. everyone yeah. wants yeah. to advertise their sidewalk sale, we have a marketing uh, marketing yeah. social yeah. media yeah. coordinator that would be happy to put that out yeah. for them. Yeah. Yes, agreed. Pending an hour from now. <laughs> yes. okay. No, that's 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 good. That's, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. So, Jan can talk about the same today cards. Well, Jan's working on them. <laughs> Good job, Jan. That's her update. Well, yeah. 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 send the link to everyone by Wednesday. You can review, give feedback. Yeah, we wanted to get them printed. Yes. For by 
like send them off by the long weekend. Yes. So okay. page one that. done. Page yeah. two is in the works, and I will send a link for everyone to review. I like how concise it is. <laughs> I did get a quote on the lettering on the tent. Yes. Uh, Armstrong design. Uh, and then come up with maybe another idea. Because depending on the material of the tents, you can figure out either way to do it. But and I just asked for, you know, courtesy of the BIA, whatever we can change the wording, but it's 75 to 80 dollars per tent. Or when you get the giant banner, yeah, two feet by 10, the grommets attach it to one of the tents, and then that can be removed. And the tents can be used at any point, and the banner can be removed to be used anywhere else at any point. Yeah, right. I lean towards the banner, right? I, I would lean towards the banner. It just seems like it, it, if, we, if we put it all BIA on all four tents, and yeah, so they're not as transferable for the members to use, like, yeah. you know, and, and you're not, never going to be able to even if you only did one. Well, still, the banner can be used for other purposes yeah. if it's on the banner. Yeah. So we just need to figure out what we want the banner to say, what color it is, and the accent, the exact width of the banner. I think it says 10 feet. On the That's 10 feet. If we, uh, we go to the same thing, it's taking the 10 down to it. But. Well, as long as if we're doing the banner, it doesn't need to say anything. So we, 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 we need to design the, the banner. So, how do we want to proceed with that? This is something we can do. When does that banner? That banner doesn't need to be designed until Heritage, right? Like a month, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm like, a, not the day. I don't think I'm not gonna print it. Yeah. So, but, so maybe that would be a great project for, or might entice two of our new staff members that might like to run yeah. on that. Give sure. them some creative freedom to get their feedback, yeah. or they can tell us that they don't want to do it. We can. Or Lisa, you can <laughs> make it look. Good. Let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to decide what it feels like. No, not to make it. Okay. No. So then the last is the, the collecting, the promoting, collecting the numbers on the sales of attendance in the businesses. And I struggle with that. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure because there's some people have POSs, some people don't. And, you know, then if you go on the other side, you know, some people have phones that can, like I, one of the ideas would be for each of our businesses or have a QR code that somebody can just take a picture of it and then that sends, this says that they were there. Um, I mean, that could, that's easily done, but then not everybody has a phone that they want to take, take a picture of it. So I'm really struggling with how to, how to promote and then collect the numbers and then to use them. Not sure how to do it. Like I haven't come up with a good plan. The best you could do is just encourage various business owners just to track it themselves. So I don't think it's getting somebody to scan a QR code as little as that does seem. Like people would blow right by it. They probably yeah. wouldn't like bother to engage with it. Yeah. So it might be on the burden of the various business owners to take in those numbers and then submit them to us if we ask really for them. Only, yeah, the only person on anybody who doesn't have a POS, they would have to yeah. everybody else who does. Like would say how many visitors you have. Yeah. So how do we promote? Is that through the do we do it through the uh, newsletter? Maybe you start yeah, that. We have to ask for a request for businesses to do that, and we have to say why we want that information. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, right. Why it's valuable. And I can I can work on that a little bit. Yeah. Then I'll, I can send you something. Yeah. I mean, I and, really and the idea is just to track track our numbers, right? Visitors and. Like we're not looking for dollar figures. We're not looking. We're looking for number of bodies in the store. Is that correct? Or are we? And, and I don't know. This this request is coming from Heritage. 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 Yeah. yeah. So, I as a business owner, I would be able to track number of sales. I would not necessarily be able to track number of bodies in store. Same. It'd be two times. Yeah, th and that would be for us too. Uh, yeah, and it will say like new customers, returning customers, like is this card been used? And that's only based on the card um, or their login. And, and, and I think the conversation about how they deal with the people in the center, the vendors, 
I think that's a conversation we need to have with her. But for us, it's, it's how do we get participation? Well, how do they attract people before? So we're, we haven't done a good job of that. Um, it's a hard one. It's been hard to do that. We're trying to do it sort of like the information booth. We track from there. We track how many people use their bus tours. We track how many people go through the tours at town hall. This year we'll have uh, Mercury Theater open, so we can track how many people go in there. So we kind of try and track through sort of those ticketed kind of functions. Um, we haven't really had a great indication of how it is for the merchants. And um, so that's something we, we've had a few merchants we've tracked in the past and they really kind of let us know. So it just would be good to know, um, you know people are coming, they're spending time at the festivities, they're watching the entertainment, are they going to the shops, are they eating in the restaurants? Is it these kind of the things that we want to make sure that we're following? And we would just like to get a better indication this year of how many people actually attend the festival. We'd also like to find where the people are coming from, but that's also tricky. So we are implementing some strategies this year to try and track that. Um, like post COVID, we'll see how we sticker are. or something. Like come to our booth, get a free sticker. Or like That's having random are. like volunteers being at different stores for different parties throughout the weekend or something. Yeah. Like or like a game. raffle, like a raffle for like some prizes from town, and like raffles that get you really made or email address where you're from. That might that might mm -hmm. entice people. It entice me if I was going to like. All wine, <laughs> St. Mary's dollars. What's that? St. Mary's dollars. St. Mary's dollars. That would be a great like, incentive. To help yeah, you. we're doing some things to, to work on. So, so that doesn't mean one of the things that worked for us early on when we first opened up, we had a guest book. People love to sign the guest book and tell us where they're from. Is can I ask, like last I we were open last year during heritage, but it doesn't stick out in my head as a standout day. Is it typically for merchants a standout day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah, okay. It, it, so it, 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 yeah, it just doesn't stick out in my head as being like a really like ooh, because we gotta go to the day. Yeah. yeah. It, so it, I just wondered if it was a day that is typically very busy for merchants. I'm anxious to see what happens now that Water Street is supposed to not walk. Yeah. Um, one of the, so we kind of talked about the state aside and we've reached out to some other festivals. The reality is there's not a great way to collect this type of data yeah, unless you're doing illustration or something like that. Um, but I know some of you, some uh, do have door counters. We have considered, does the town purchase a few door counters, put them in certain spots for each event? I don't know if that it's, helps at all. It's, it doesn't give you a completely, like, I mean, they have to walk in through your door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they're out on the street. No, I, yeah, and I get that, right? You know, so activities and stuff. It, it, we're all ears if there is, an investment to be made in some sort of technology that makes sense for this event and any others. We're certainly willing to consider that, but it doesn't seem to be some great stuff out there. Is there one entrance? Yeah, there's one entrance. Yeah, there's one entrance. Yeah, there's one entrance. No, no, for something like that, there's not. Uh, we can purchase, possibly purchase cell phone data that, um, that just Sorry. gives you how many people's cell phones from what areas, but it is weird, right? So <laughs> I was like, um yeah. Yeah. so so yeah, and that, that's the point. Is is this data from these events is important, it's helpful, it's really good for grants. If we are getting the grant writing and that uh, that information. The more important part is to have some sort of data point that we can compare you to. The data may not be accurate, you may not. You know, we may, we may say there's 3,000 people, whether it's 2,500 or 3,500 is not important, but if you collect it in the same way the next year and you start to see a trend, that's the important part that the trend is going in the right direction. And so, but anyways, we're, we're all leaders of their our investments. We, the town, can assist with them. So we can do that. But going back to your question, I, we find the merchant that are the festival, heritage festivals are second big spaces. Oh wow. Okay. 
Yeah, it's I don't know. Over a typical Saturday, it's it's higher, but it's yeah, it's not it's not, it's not your second biggest day. No, no, it's not the Murphy Open House. It's an annoying day Yeah, I've heard it both ways. There's people that say it's the best, second best weekend of the sure. year, and then others say, well, there's kids' activities and that people don't want to go drag a grocery bag or a plastic bag all afternoon when you park sure. at the PRC. You want to be there for the event, you're not actually shopping because you have to carry it around all day. But some people, it's a hit. That's a few. Should yeah. So at this point, it would be the recommendation that the Virgo Heritage Festival update be received. May I have a move on? Thanks, Claire. And seconded. Thanks, Sue. All in favor? Any opposed? Moving on to item eight, the treasurer's no, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Right, it's me. Sorry, I'm writing down. <laughs> yes, our 7.3. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I would like to propose that the BIA sponsor part of St. Mary's Pride Day this year. Mm. That's my proposal. I have, I, I can't share, but I have a sponsorship package. Is it, it just is a Pride St. Mary's? Is this, is this? this is sponsorship St. Mary's Pride Day for 2023. June 11th. June 11th. June 11th. It's Sunday, June 11th. It was a great event last year. Yeah. It, it is a great event. Um, there's a copper, bronze, silver, gold, platinum tiered sponsorship. Um, <clears throat> depending on the dollar amount, you you know get advertising on the website, social media promotion. Uh, you get a logo on posters and print materials. And if you go from silver or above, which is between 250 and $499, you also get your logo included in the sponsor event banner. Do you want to do you want to show your screen? I have no idea how to do that. Do you want to do it? Yes, I can do that, I think. Would you like to share? Sure. If everyone wants to see it, I can do that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't Pressure, Wait, pressure. No, I got it. I got it. Okay, Kelly, I sent it to you. Yeah, I get that it may not be like the biggest like weekend for merchants, maybe like to increase traffic, but it was busy that Sunday. It was mm -hmm. great. Like it was a really Surprise. young, a really diverse crowd. It, like in terms of ages, like yes. it was young and old and Still, it was a good Sunday. But like in terms of people, I was like, okay, it was a really well turned out event. People were walking the streets. Like, like hmm. it was good. They were also shopping, but how many people did it bring to town? Do you know? That all yeah, that yeah, that I don't know. That last year was the first. Yes. Last year was the first. The first. first. And, yeah, and I also feel like people's families would come, right? Yes. So you're not gonna get like no one's gonna try. Maybe someone would, but it's unlikely that someone would travel all the way from another Kitchener to come to St. Mary's Pride. But if they knew someone and they were connected to this community or, you know, to support them. Yeah, there's like a Pride Day event at the Platinum. Because if you, if you become like a Platinum sponsor, you actually get like a tent where you can set up a table. So if you were a merchant, you could, and you had the ability to sell, like we could set up a table of books that cater to the LGBTQ community. And then if I had the means of, you know, having people pay away from the right. store, so you can do that. So there are events. Yeah, there, there was a concert, there was a concert yeah. last year, there was Red Stories Fine. Did you get tell tons of games and crafts for kids? It's a free set there one was, minute ago. Lots of free like food and drink, like popcorn and yeah. drinks. Um, it was all everything was free. Which was great. Yeah, that's great. Um, I don't remember what else we saw. There. It's just one that just June eleventh. And we do have a three thousand dollar budget for supporting events. Mm -hmm. 
And what was the map story again? Kelly, just Kelly, oh, I just sent it to Kelly, so she'll put it up on the board for you. But I mean, it can it can really be up to nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. I think that might be a little high to win for first year to see what are, what a sponsorship. Like the platform, yeah. Yes, I agree. And also, unless somebody, unless we're willing to set up a tent and yeah. 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 work a table, I also don't think the platinum is probably no. the right one. I mean, my thought was silver so or gold. So, yeah, for five hundred, be a fresh official press release. Is this five hundred to seven four hundred? Plus to be 500 more. So you could be, yeah. oh yeah. Oh, like I, I did it as a business. I did the silver sponsorship. We did silver as well. Yeah. And um, and I did 350. So I could, I see. So oh, any, any number I in that, that area. For field of this idea, I guess before we talk about like, well, I like where, where do we get silver, <laughs> like bronze, or I'm, I'm gold? Supported. I'm yeah, supporting. I'm supporting. I'm supporting. Yeah. 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 Gold. Yeah. Gold. Gold. Silver, yeah. gold. I think silver, gold is. I think gold is our cap. Like, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think the five hundred dollars of the gold is like. I think. Yeah. I think five hundred. I think the official request release is probably the best part of that. For us, yeah, right. It's like going to get you that. It's going yeah. to in the blog yeah. post. I think that's yeah. Mm -hmm. for. yeah. The rest of that's okay, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So somebody just put a motion on the floor. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, do I use it as a recommendation? Yeah, we'll email yes, I'll email Robin and tell her, and then it is the. So the recommendation that St. Mary's BIA sponsor be St. Mary's Pride Day 2023 in the amount of $500 from the events budget line. Yeah, I have a mover. Thanks, Dan. Seconder. Thanks, Lisa. All in favor? Are there any opposed? So and it's now the recommendation that we. Uh, now we're going to eight. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> the treasurer's report. I am eventful. It is attached in your um, package there. So we are <clears throat> balance as of April 28th, $83,032.88. Cleared there the um, descriptions for uh, what they were for. So poetry, uh, the facility for the walk of commons, a visitor guide was paid for, and the tents are paid for. Uh, and the pending expenses are the sponsorship for the heritage festival to the town. And now, right. And for our, yeah, Pride will be on the next month's journey. And our um, heritage safe day cards. And we may as well um, forward the money to the town as well for the watering of the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So at this point, it would be the recommendation that the May 2023 Treasurer report be accepted as presented. I have a mover. Claire, seconder, Jan, all in favor? Any opposed? So now the council report. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got some stuff for you. So the downtown service location review survey concluded, uh, I believe that was last week sometime. Uh, they had over 500 respondents, which is awesome, but they got that many. 
so now I believe they'll just kind of be working with that information as well as their consultant and the relevant stakeholders and determine kind of the best use of uh, our various downtown services, but predominantly for 14 Church Street, that was the big, uh, big question mark with all that. So that'll be moving along. We should gain more insight into that in the next X number of months, I could tell you. Uh, the visitor's guide dropped last week. Pretty tight read, actually. Would encourage you all to check it out. So, yeah, <laughs> get in there. Uh, I was going to tell you a bit about parking, but Jen told you a whole lot about parking. <laughs> and so I can actually give you some of the uh, council reference stuff that he emailed me for it if you want it. So just ask me for it if you'd like. I can forward it to you. And finally, I think my only other thing. Oh, yeah, the flat stand. So in terms of the flats, uh, the stuff they showed us tonight, those two different designs, I would really encourage you to offer feedback on that. You guys do have like a, a position in this community where you interact with a lot of people. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are and how you think it might affect bringing people to town. So any uh, thoughts you come up with or things you hear, please forward them to staff or myself. Uh, I'm not totally clear on how I feel about it yet. The biggest point of contention for council, especially was those walking paths changing to, uh, well, walking paths <laughs> rather than roads. Yeah. That'll be, I think that'll be a big sort of point of strife and I'm not totally sure how I feel about it. So if you help me gu guide me there, I'd love to know. So thank you. And that's it. Comments, questions, concerns? Excellent. So then at this point, it would be the recommendation that the verbal council report be received. May I have a mover? Thank you, Alex Seconder. Thanks, Lisa. All in favor? Any opposed? So moved. Next, item 10 point is the upcoming meeting, June 12, 6 p.m. Um, number 11. It is the recommendation that the Seniors Business Improvement Area Board moved into a session that is closed to the public at 7.42 p.m. as authorized under the Municipal Act, Section 239-2B, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, and D, labor relations or employee negotiations. Madam Mover. Thank you, Claire. Thanks, Jen. All in favor? 